So recently, there's been a lot of talk once again that it's the end of the US dollar as a global reserve currency because recently, America's biggest rivals, China and Russia, have gang up together and say, fuck America. They're using the dollar to control the world, to impose sanctions. So we are going to trade in our own currencies. We're going to trade all the commodities in Chinese yen, Russian rubles. And Russia has pushed the BRICS countries, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, to create their own unified currency, like a BRICS currency to replace the dollar in global trade. So two questions I've been asked a lot of by my students. Number one, can the US dollar be replaced as a global reserve currency? Is the dollar's status coming to an end? Number two, if that's gonna happen, how will that affect the US stock market? So let's find out in this video. Now, first, you must remember that the prophecy that the US dollar would lose its global uh, dominance is not something new. In fact, it was prophesized a lot in the early 2000s, especially when the euro was created. In 1999, the European countries, they got together, Germ Germany, France, Italy, and, and whatever, right, Greece, they got together and they created the euro currency. Now, initially, the euro currency did really well. If you look at the euro versus US dollar currency pair, you can see that initially it took off like crazy. And especially during the great financial crisis, when the US Federal Reserve, they cut interest rates to zero, the US dollar lost a lot of its value. So at a time, I remember a lot of people were joking that the US dollar was becoming like toilet paper, that the US dollar's uh, dominance was coming to an end, that you'd be replaced by the euro. And sure enough, it looked that way from 2003 all the way to uh, 2008. You can see the euro USD going up, which means euro going up, dollar collapsing, right? But then what happened? Then everything reversed. And over the last 13 years, from 2009 to today, the euro has collapsed. Whoa! The euro has collapsed against the US dollar. So what happened? Why did this euro fail? In fact, at one point of time, they were saying that maybe uh, they're going to disband the euro, right? They're going to kill the euro. So what happened? You know, they realized after a while that creating the European currency was a really bad, stupid idea because you got all these European nations and all these European countries have different economic growth, different debt levels. So when they all form a single currency, it's going to be very difficult for that currency. It's kind of like... If you are a rich person and you've got friends who are very poor and you exchange credit cards, you got to fight, right? So like Germany is a rich EU country, but they have to kind of like have the same currency as Greece, which is a poor EU country that creates a lot of problems. So, and so that is why the euro has in fact been depreciating against the US dollar and is nowhere close to replacing the dollar as a global reserve currency. Now, if the euro failed, right, the euro, which is a group of all these European countries failed, then if you think that the BRICS currency is going to succeed against the dollar, you're on freaking drugs. Why? Why will it not work? Why can't the Chinese yen become the global uh, reserve currency? There's no freaking way. Let me tell you why. Because remember that China is a communist country at the end of the day. And China has strict capital controls, which, which means the Chinese yen is a controlled currency. It cannot freely move uh, in and out of China or around the world. Did you know that a lot of rich billionaire Chinese, they can't get their money out of China. They can't. In fact, I've got good friends who are millionaires and billionaires in China, and they can't get their money out because the yen is a controlled currency. Now, China knows that if they allow the yen to have no capital controls, which means you can bring money in and out easily, a lot of Chinese billionaires will pull their money out of China. And that will cause the Chinese economy to really, really collapse. So China can't afford to do that. That's why the Chinese yen is a controlled currency. So as long as the yen is a controlled currency, there's no way it can become a global reserve currency. There's no way it can come close to replacing the dollar. Now, how about the other countries? Russia, the Russian ruble? Oh, please. You know, that's, that's in a shit house, right? How about the Indian rupee? Oh my God, the Indian rupee has been depreciating against the US dollar for, for many, many years, right? Same with the South African rand and the um, Brazil real, 
right? So in fact, if you take a look at history, you can see that every one of those currencies in a brick block, they have been losing value against the US dollar for many, many years. So you can see that on this chart, right, I plot all the different currencies against the US dollar. Uh, almost every major currency has lost value against the US dollar. Take a look. Number one, Euro USD, which is the Euro versus USD, down for 13 years. The Chinese Yen has been, well, more or less flat, right? Um, the Yen, Japanese Yen, has been going down versus the USD. The Pound has been going down versus the USD. The Indian Rupee has been collapsing versus the USD. And finally, the Russian Ruble has been collapsing against the US dollar, right? Now you hear a lot of people saying that, oh, the US dollar is losing value. Yeah, all fiat currencies lose value, all of them, okay? But the US dollar is the best house in a bad neighborhood because every other currency loses value even more than US dollar, except, except, I'm very proud to say the Singapore dollar. That's right, I'm from Singapore. The Singapore dollar is one of the few currencies that actually gain against the US dollar for the last 13 years. Everything else has lost value against the US dollar. So if you ask me, is there any chance for any other currency to replace the US dollar as a global reserve currency? Not in the next 30 to 50 years. If you think it will, you're a freaking moron. <laughs> because take a look at that. Right now it's got 59% share of world foreign exchange reserves. And China, uh, Chinese yen is only 2.8%. Okay, the Russian ruble is not even their closest would be the euro at 19.7%, but that's been losing value like crazy. And next in line would be the Japanese yen and then the British pound, which again are all losing value against the US dollar. So to answer that first question, no, the US dollar will remain the global reserve currency and the global dominant trade currency for the next 30 to 50 years. Let me answer the second question, which is in the event that the US dollar does lose value against other currencies, is that bullish or bearish for US stocks? And the answer is in the short term, in the short term, it is actually bullish for US stocks. A weaker dollar is good for US companies. Why? Because when a dollar is weaker, that means that US companies, their products, products and services will look cheaper to foreign countries. So it becomes more attractively priced. So that will increase their sales and profits. Number one. Number two, when the US dollar is weak, and a US company like McDonald's, they earn money all around the world and they bring back all these foreign currencies to the US when they convert to US dollar, it converts to more US dollar since the dollar is weaker versus foreign currency. So again, in the short term, when the US dollar weakens, uh, US stocks tend to go up and you can see it from this chart. Now over here, you can see I've plotted the US dollar index, which is the US dollar versus a basket of foreign currencies, plotted it against the S&P 500, which is in orange below. So again, you can see, this is the short term. This is over about two years. You can see what happens when the US dollar strengthens, right? When the US dollar strengthens, the S&P 500 goes down, right? The US stocks go down. And when the US dollar weakens, then US stocks go up. So in the short term, a weak US dollar is good for the stock market in the short term. But in the long term, in the long term, it doesn't make any difference. It has no correlation. Let's look at the long term over 40 years, right? This is over 40 years. So you can see that over 40 years, the again, the US dollar index has gone through periods where it gains against foreign currencies, then it weakens against foreign currencies. It goes through these cycles, right? Depending on whether the Fed raises or cuts interest rates. So you can see, for example, uh, over here in the early 1980s, the US dollar, gain a lot of strength. US dollar went up. But what happened to the stock market in orange? The stock market went up as well. So both went up at the same time, right? Then in the late 80s to early 90s, the US dollar collapsed in value. But the US stock market went up again. <laughs> and over here, you can see US dollar goes up, stock market goes up. Then over here, the stock market goes down, stock market goes down, as this kind of like goes sideways, right? And then dollar collapses, US stocks go up. Then over here, US dollar goes up, stock market collapse. Then over here, US dollar strengthens. In the last um, uh, 10, 12 years, 12, 12 years, and the US market goes up. 
So in the long run, there's no correlation between the US dollar and the US stock market. Now, some students have been asking me, hey, Adam, if, if the US dollar loses its global reserve currency status, can US companies still do well? Can US stock markets still go up? Yes. So case in point, take a look at this example. I showed you that in the last 13 years, the euro was a very, very badly performing currency. The euro collapsed against the US dollar, right? But if you look at specific European companies, some of them did even better than US companies. So in Europe, my two favorite companies are number one, ASML. So ASML, as you guys know, is uh, the largest semiconductor equipment company in the Netherlands, all right? So they produce uh, UV photolithography machines used to uh, make semiconductor chips. So ASML, uh, in full disclosure, is in my portfolio. I own the shares. It's a, one of my favorite stocks. So again, ASML, they report in euros, right? So it's an European currency. But take a look, the, the stock ASML has gained 585% return versus the S&P of 98% return over or oh, since 2015, all right? My other favorite European stock is LVMH, Louis Vuitton. I love the company, I love the company. And again, this company trades in euros, right? Which again, lousy currency, but look at the stock. LVMH, ticker symbol MC, listed on the uh, Paris uh, Euronext exchange. You can see its gain, 646% way higher than the S&P 500. So that goes to show you that um, whether a stock goes up or not depends on the fundamentals of the individual business. Uh, a lot of people buying Louis Vuitton handbags, a lot of people uh, you know, creating semiconductor chips using ASML equipment, right? It's got nothing to do with the uh, currency in which that company operates in. So in summary, remember that all fiat currencies will lose value over time. Now, a lot of people have been uh, looking at this chart and say, hey, look at the US dollar. The US dollar has lost 90% of its value in the last you know, 100 years. And it's true. Again, all fiat currency loses value over time. But remember that as the US dollar loses value, other fiat currencies lose value even more. The yen, the euro, the Russian ruble, they all lose value even more. So what do we need to do in order to protect and build our wealth? We need to invest in assets that will hedge against um, the devaluation of fiat currencies. So of course, what do you invest in? Some people will say, well, that's why you buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, because you know, Bitcoin has limited number. Now, again, I'm not going to argue with some of you, but I just don't buy that argument. Uh, so it's something that I don't invest in. I still personally feel that in the short term, sure, Bitcoin can go up because of speculation, because of uh, manipulation, but I think in the long run, it's gonna be worthless. And again, that's just my opinion. Please don't listen to me. If you don't agree, that's great. Go buy some Bitcoin, right? But I'm not gonna buy any Bitcoin. Now, of course, there are some people who say, hey, buy gold, right? Gold is real, you know? But I subscribe to Buffett's logic on gold. Uh, I do uh, think that you can go to YouTube. There are a lot of videos on it. This is a great video on why Warren Buffett thinks that gold is a very stupid investment in the long run. Uh, and he compiles all his speeches about gold. Now, the long and short of it is that gold is a non-productive asset. Cryptocurrency is a non-productive asset. Now, what's a non-productive asset? It is an asset you buy that doesn't produce anything. Its value comes purely from what people think it is worth. It's only got psychological value. It's got no intrinsic value. If you bought gold you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, you bought gold, what can you do with that piece of gold? You can rub it, you can fondle it, you can kiss it, you can caress it, right? And after 20 years, you still have one piece of gold, right? That's it. It doesn't produce other piece of, pieces of gold, all right? but it's maybe worth more because people are willing to pay more psychologically, right? So in the short term, any asset can outperform another asset. So in the short term, crypto could outperform stocks, gold could outperform stocks. Anything can happen in the short term because short term is all driven by emotions. But in the long run, in the long run, a productive asset will always outperform a non-productive asset. A productive asset is an asset that you buy that generates 
cash flow. If you buy real estate, you can rent it out. It generates cash. That's a productive asset. So for me personally, uh, I put all my money into the stock market because when I buy stocks, I'm buying pieces of businesses. And businesses are productive assets. Like you own a piece of Apple, a piece of McDonald's, a piece of Nike, a piece of Walt Disney. They are businesses that produce goods and services that people use every single day. They generate free cash flow every single year. And so at the end of a long term, not only do you own the company, you get all the cash that a company generates in dividends and, and, and capital gains and so on and so forth. So again, if you take a look at the long run, you can see that uh, the S&P 500 way outperforms a non-productive asset like gold. And that's why to answer some of my students' questions, I, I don't buy gold. I never have, I never will. I only buy productive assets. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's been useful. And like always, I'll see you guys in the next one. May the markets be with you. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.